Hi everyone, welcome back to another Cut Above with Chris. It's been a few days since I last shaved. I did manage to get a shave in, once again with Mitchell's Roll Fat and the Stir Sterling, the Simpsons Chubby 2 with no irritation. So I can only put it down to the blade and the razor combo in the day, which was the Gillette Vintage Blade for my face, and the Start Razor with a Gillette Super Thin in it, and it really tore my head up quite bad, it was really sore. Two days later I managed to shave my head again, even with a little bit of irritation still there, using the skin guard and the exact same products I used. So thankfully and happily, it doesn't appear to be Mitchell's Rule Fat. There was a combination of brush burn and razor burn and over shading for day after day after day after day with new products. Just too excited and couldn't wait. The soap for today is Sterling Agar. Now Agar wood, which this is, is basically known in the scent world, or the fragrance world or the shaving world as Oud Wood, O-U-D. Agar is, is quite an expensive essential oil and I'm not sure whether this has got real oud wood scent in it, real agar oil, so I'm not sure. But the scent on it, I've just squished it in this bowl, it was a sample, it was sent to me from the Artisan Arcade. Peter over there seems like a really nice guy, i never met him before, I don't know really anything about him other than he has started up this online business selling artisan products, sterling being his main thing. And of course, you guys know you can't really get sterling in Australia unless you ship it from overseas. I'm not sure at this stage whether he's going to do splashes and balms and everything else to go with it, but it'd be really good if he does. So fingers crossed that's what you can get from there. I think, don't quote me on this, it might, his website might be up and running actually. It might have been up, I think it might have been yesterday or today, but I'll need to double check that. But it is artisanarcade.com.au I believe, and you can head on over there and have a little look and see what you think. Now, his packaging was excellent. It came very well packaged and like, really, I mean, I, I was sent some samples and some some sterling frost drops and things like that but it was really good quality packaging and from what I could see other than the sellotape on the outside most of it was sort of eco-friendly as well and biodegradable which is good I'm not sure from memory my memory's pretty shit so don't quote me on that it might have been wrapped in plastic actually now that I think on it of course sterling stuff is shrink wrapped the samples and the tubs come in plastic but I keep talking about it I'm waiting for the artisan out there to come out all eco-friendly literally everything they do is wood you know metals things that are reusable aluminiums all that sort of thing most of your artisan razor makers and things like that are generally eco-friendly other than machinery and stuff like that they use but it's all metals and things so anyway that's enough rambling on and bullshit let's get down to the shave so the brush for today i'm sticking with the simpson oh, just dropped it in the water for I was trying to stop the water from getting up the knot but that's that gone and uh, the reason i'm sticking with it is I actually contacted Simpson regarding the, the shedding that I've been getting. And of course, with every natural hair brush, you can and sometimes don't encounter shedding. Now they reckon it could be up to 60 uses from you before it actually completely stops or stops, gets to a minimal. So I'm going to persevere with this brush over the next couple of months. I'm going to be pretty much using it exclusively. I know that's a bit boring, but I still talk shit in my channel, so you'll get the shit top no matter what. So. Simpsons Chubby 2 looks like that. This one has got a 27mm knot, best badger, and really is the best badger I've used. It's a good word for it, and it smells pretty good. Doesn't smell as nice as it did before because I really, really cleaned it out the last time out. This this part here, when I'm at it, so I think I've got a hair already. I don't know whether you'll be able to see that. Just can you see that one just sticking out right there? If I just lightly touch that, that'll come out probably. There you go. So I haven't pulled that out, that's just loose. It's either loose or it's coming away from the knot in the bottom. Now, I really do look after my products, especially my brushes. They get a really good rinse out. I put them on the towel as is recommended by Sterling as well. And I then air them out for long periods of time. They're always out anyway, they're always getting aired out. I think that's a little bit too much water in this knot. It's going to be a really airy ladder to begin with. I actually use these little bowls mainly for loading, but I've got in here with too wet of a knot, so it's going to be creating a ladder in the bowl by the looks of it. So I'm going to do a Simpson of Ast. I'm going to really work this brush, put it through its paces over the next couple of months and just see how it holds up. 
I'm not expecting them to look after me with a new brush or anything like that because at the end of the day I bought this second hand. I don't really know how old it is. I think Mark that I bought it from had it for about eight months before me. I don't know whether he's the original purchaser, I really don't know. But they will only actually honour a warranty or give you a new brush if it's less than a year old and you're the original owner, which is fair enough. You know, I can't expect it. It's a, it's a natural hair, it's, it's handmade. I don't expect it to be perfect and, and not lose hairs. But I do expect it to lose less hairs than it is. And like I said, this, you can see there, look. Can you see all those hairs? They're just all loose. I'm just going to grab hold of them. You see here. So yeah, it's losing a lot of hairs. It has done since I got it, pretty much. But I've got to persevere with it. Now, like I say, Mark that I purchased this, or that I, sorry, never purchased, that I traded for, didn't actually use this brush much. Brush, didn't use this brush much. Didn't use it much. It's very lightly used. And for that reason, I'm going to really stick to the Try and use it 60 times sort of thing. I don't know, I've probably used it 10, 15 times now. And so far, you know, I've I've lost a good 50 to 100 hairs in it. Easily, that amount of hairs. Now, just to give some people that maybe not quite realise this, in that brush, being the, the chubby two, I would reckon there'd be between 20 and 50,000 hairs in there, at least. So, to lose 100 hairs out of that, is it a massive amount? But it's still enough that it's, that it's sort of worrying. Just going to dry the handle off just a little bit. And this is a no prep shave. I've just come in from well trying to work. I didn't have to do any work really. So I struggled to do anything. So I sort of went out there and watched my business partner and my dad work. <laughs> so yeah, it is what it is. Oh, I'm still hurting. I've got no real. I've got no strength in it, I can't pick things up, I've got any weight on them. I can obviously lift my arm, move it around now without any real pain, but because of this, my shoulder's now giving me a lot of pain. It's a freaking nightmare, I can't win. Right, let's start building this ladder with a the sterling. There's the brush, nice and loaded up. I've really overloaded this. Now the scent on this is absolutely lovely. Big fan. If you guys have watched me for long enough, you know that I do like oud wood. I, I love that scent, the stallion, soap from Razor Rock. This to me smells like a more natural woody scent compared to the stallion. The stallion's got more of a cologne type thing going on. Now I did obviously mention to Sterling as well. Obviously, I, I love this brush, I really do. It's the best knot I've ever used in terms of natural hair. I still think I prefer synthetic overall for lathering. I know what I get with the synthetic every time I can create pretty much identical lathers. With a natural hair knot, you've really got to work it. You know, you get used to the knot itself. This this knot's incredible, it makes amazing ladders. As you'll already be seeing. There's another here. You can see that just wobbling about there. And I don't think, to be honest, I don't think I'm really over pressing with it. But it's just such a dense knot and there's so many hairs in there. And it would just appear that quite a lot of these hairs just didn't quite get enough glue on them in the bump at the base of the knot to hold it all together. Sterling just makes amazing lather as well. Look how glossy that is. Oh, 
I'll be honest with you, that's a little bit, probably a little bit dry for me, but I'm almost contemplating keeping it like that because it's really dense. Creamy. Look at that. Stick with it like that. That's amazing stuff. Sterling never fails to impress me, it's just brilliant soap. And really, in the grand scheme of things, when you look at the amount of improvements other soap companies are having to make to better the soaps. Sterling hasn't changed, I don't think. I think it's the same base they've had since I started wet shaving three years ago. I don't know whether they've tweaked it a little bit along the way. There's another here. There's another one as well. It's just loose. I'm not pulling these hard, they're just, they're just falling out. As you can see there, with the gloss on that. I'll set that to the side. Now, the razor. The razor is a hybrid the same razor and what I've done is I've taken that carved aluminium and popped on a stainless steel open comb B plate and I think the colour combo looks brilliant the black and silver it looks amazing what it also does is it just gives it a little bit more heft in the head just a little bit more weight it's not heaps it's not major noticeable but it's definitely heavier I can feel the difference and the blade I'm going to pop in here is a nice safe bet hopefully for this razor it's worked very very well recently in the car and that is a boss cord. I'm just looking for a nice smooth comfortable close shave. I do have an ingrown here on my just down here which believe it or not this sounds absolutely nuts but I'm hoping this actually cuts it open today so I can get the bloody thing out. I'm not all for leaving it to grow and trying to do all the you know I just like to get the bloody thing out. My skin heals up pretty good so I've loaded the boss cord in there and there we go so that is it with the blade in. But I think the colour combo, the black and silver, is very, very nice. It might even look nice with the gold as well. But here we go. B plate open comb, which I think is 0.73 blade cap. With a brand new Voss cord. Three days growth. Cold water shave. No prep. Just a lather. Look how dense that lather is. Come on, focus. Focusing. Come on. There we go. Brilliant stuff. And it's rinsing out pretty well. Cold water shaves generally don't rinse out as well. If the soap has a high fat content, it just doesn't do very well. Oh, that's a bit tuggy. That's cold water shaves for you with no prep. It could be the blade. This is a new pack of boss cords in my last pack. I don't think we're a very good pack of blades. That's a bit better. The Voskhod blades are Teflon coated on the edge, so sometimes they can be a little bit rough the first pass. Or for the first part of the first pass at least, and then they just they get buttery smooth, but I don't, I'm not a fan of that. I like my blades to be really sharp and smooth at the beginning. Open comb definitely gives you that little bit more bite. I 
you know, really going across the grain or with the grain here, but I'm actually going across. I'm able to do that because it's sterling. It's very, very slick. A bit of water. So first pass to knock three days growth down. Pretty damn good. Great residual slickness in the silk. You can, I can never really fault sterling's performance. Since I've found recently that allegedly a lot of artisans out there use sort of pre-made oils and stuff like that, pre-made scents and mix them together and things, and don't actually create their own scents. So I, I didn't realise that was something that happened. I thought every artisan just invented their own scent from scratch. But obviously, having spoken to a few people, it's quite a can be quite a time-consuming thing, and then trying to get the right levels and stuff is quite hard. And of course, essential oils are quite they're very expensive, especially when you're dealing with things like oud wood, or agar wood, as it's called here. I mean, if this is real agar wood oil, it's very, very expensive. In fact. In terms of price, it's more expensive than gold per ounce. Another here. Nope. See, it's like a little half here. See, that's the ones that are worrying me because it's almost like they're not snapping in the middle. It's nothing. I'm soaking them for long enough. Now, badger here, as far as I'm aware, doesn't actually absorb water. It just sort of holds the heat and sort of holds onto the water. It doesn't actually absorb it and become another two. Big one, and is that one? Yeah, it's just loose. I'm not pulling these hard. These are just I'm lightly grabbing them and pulling them, and they're coming out no problem. Just going to dip the tips just a little bit and add a little bit of water in here. It's better. Just trying to show you the shine it's just glistening in the mirror in front of me it doesn't really show much on the camera but i can show it a little bit so here we go across the grain with my kai carve your hair carve hybrid this has got a 3.25 inch handle aluminium handle aluminium top cap stainless steel base plate open comb and obviously a stainless steel blade You see there, right there. I think it's an angle, I'm not 100% sure. Sort of 70 to 80% sure it's definitely an angle. But Very smooth. Beautiful. Right, a bit of water. Oh yeah, scent's really nice. 
lovely woodsy sort of, I mean it's that. It's almost got a little hint of like a five spice or cinnamon or something in there, it's quite a sort of like a spicy woody scent, really really nice. I'm not sure whether that is actual what agar wood smells like, to be honest I've never actually smelled 100% agar oils. In the likelihood is I never will. Tell you what, but it still doesn't take away from the quality of the brush. The knot is phenomenal. At this stage, still highly recommended as well. As there's no way I wouldn't recommend it. It's phenomenal. Just obviously, if it keeps sharing beyond sort of 50, 60 shaves, then. One hair every now and then is fine, but all my other natural hair brushes very rarely lose a hair. They're all cared for in the exact same way. All my hardware is really, you know, it's polished, it's cleaned every after every shave. Generally, with the chubby, even off camera, once I'm done, I still go back and end up washing it a little bit more just to get the rest of the soap out because it's just, I never quite get it all. I was hoping to open up that spot here, but try as I may, I can't do it. And I'm getting a really close, comfortable shave. I'm just gonna just rinse that off a little bit, finish off around my lips, and then I'm done. There we go. What a shave. Right, rinse out the sink, rinse off my face.
Right, where is it? Here is what's left of my album book. I keep taking bloody chunks out of it and all sorts of them. No, it just doesn't want to focus. I'm sort of struggling with the focus today. That's all that's left of it. It was a Razor Rock album book. That's all I've got left. I'm just going to wet my face again. Post shave on Sterling is excellent. I'm going to finish off with a, a band today though. Well, so far, that's extreme minimal irritation. A burn, a little bit on the bottom of my neck, but almost nothing on my face. So it just goes to show, I did say recently, you're going to get irritated, you're going to feel something with an album block, no matter what. A little bit just up here. I actually didn't really get anything on my lips or anything, I'm quite surprised. It obviously shows how smooth the shave was. Right, just rinse that off. Tastes like shit. I think the alum does do, it does help for some reason. I don't know exactly quite what it does. It is an astringent type thing. It does seem to help sort of start the healing process of your skin again. You do damage your skin when you shave it. It does start to get that healing process back up and running again. All right, let's just see if I can get this brush clean out. See how many hairs I lose in the cleaning process. And for soon, quite a few. I see that right there. I hate stuff like that. I don't get ingrown hairs too often now, but when I get them, they're absolute pain. So from just flicking it, I think, don't quote me on this, I think I might have to. Just there, yeah, there's two that are just sitting sort of high. I'm just going to lightly touch them. That one's not. That one's not. Right, that's a good start. They looked like they were going to come out. What's these ones here? Nope, solid. Okay, I'll dry the handle off. And then what I do, as recommended by Simpson as well, is to basically rub your brush along a towel to get as much of the moisture out as you can. So just like that, back was and forth. The camera picks it up sort of. If I go right to the back of the towel like that, you'll see me quite easily on it. But I need to use the full length of the towel to... It does take quite a bit of moisture out of the brush. I'll just show you now. There's a hair there. One coming out. I don't know whether you can see that. There's there. It's a very fine one. There we go. You can just sort of see it in front of the black. That's just one. But I'll just show you here, just to show you how much moisture comes out of the brush. If I hold that up... So, every little helps. The more moisture you can get out of your brush, the quicker it'll dry, the less moisture you'll have in the brush when it's drying, naturally airing out. Maybe I'm too vigorous when I do this thing. I would say, yeah, it's definitely, so you, you'll hear when I put this, I'm going to put this to the microphone, which I think is on this side, you'll hear the noise. So what I'm doing there is I'm just squeezing the knot like that. And you can see the knot, it's just sort of fact, you can see there, there's a little bit of soap there. So the knot isn't cleaned out. It's very, very important that you get the soap out of the knot. I knew that before I contacted Simpson, but they also highlight that, how important it is to get all the soap out of as much as you can. Now you may not get it all out, but you really need to make an effort to get most of it out. And I find, generally, when there's no soap left, there's still soap in there. It doesn't make as much noise when you squeeze the knot together. Because generally what the noise is, is the, the hairs interacting with the, the, the leftover res residue soap in the very face of the knot. So that's much better. So definitely not as much noise, but there's another here. 
like I say, and I keep saying it, I'm not that worried at the moment. This knot is very, very dense, similar to the Morrison Fondrum that I used to have, which I've sent over to Kyle Brown Man Shaves. And since he's had it, I don't know if he's lost a hair, I think he said he may have lost one or two. But it was almost like I worked it into oblivion, all the hairs had come out that were going to come out, and then sent it on to Kyle, and I'm, I'm happy he's got it anyway. It was a very disheartening brush, that one. Cost a lot of money. And I couldn't in good conscience sell it to someone. I knew Kyle and Kyle liked the look of it. There we go, look. See that? It's four more. I don't know how many that is for this shave now, but that's quite a just they're literally just fucking falling out of it. They're obviously not all falling out because I can literally grab a section of hair and just sort of lightly just tug on it. No, I'm not pulling hard, I'm just lightly pinching and pulling and nothing comes out. So they're not all loose, they're not all broken, they're not all damaged. But obviously, this is another way I find as well. They'll probably look at this and go, what the fuck are you doing? But if you use your fingers and just sort of backwards and forwards, I'm not doing this hard, I'm not, I'm literally just touching it like that, just lightly. It's good for my wrist as well, I'm trying to, when I spread my fingers it sort of helps with the muscle building back up my wrist a little bit I think. So I just do that for a bit and then what happens is it just sort of grabs any loose fibres which you can see there, there's one just sticking out there. It just sort of brings it to the, brings it to the top if there's anything loose. I'm over 30 minutes here. I'm sort of just going through this brush, just showing you guys this sort of process I keep going through. Now, after, off, off camera, generally what I do is I'll wash this with shampoo and then leave it to dry for a couple of days. Once it's bone dry, run a comb through it and then start the process again of lathering and everything. I'm not going to lather this brush every day. I'm just going to use this sort of every three days or so. Beautiful scent from the agar wood. But it's a stunning little brush. I'll get to that anyway. The soap for today was Sterling Soap Company Agar. This sample was very kindly sent to me from Peter over at Artisan Arcade. I'm not 100% sure where they're based in Australia, I can't remember. But they are an Australian company and they are the only company in Australia that stock Sterling. I think, as far as I'm aware, they are the only Australian company that stocks Sterling. And all I do is I've squished it in a little bowl. This is a sample, massive sample from Sterling. And I popped it in a bowl, squished it down, and then I just sit that on top of it. And I just let it dry like that and leave it. That sample would last me too long. I'll probably go through this three samples pretty quickly. The brush for today, obviously you've seen it way more than you wanted to. Simpson Chubby 2 in Best Badger. It's an absolutely beautiful brush. You can see how dense that knot is. It's super dense. I mean, it's so hard to sort of squeeze and get a... So, I say I'm still not too worried, but I am a little bit to be honest. I mean, that's there's another two. Is that two here? Is it? No, no, that's the two here that I seen earlier. <laughs> it, it, it's shedding a lot of hair, a lot, but maybe it's just because it's getting used more now. It's actually getting used, should I say? Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's. It's starting to loosen all the hairs and stuff that were a little bit loose in there, so it's starting to get the use that it deserves, and that's reducing the hairs that are in there that are loose and broken or damaged or whatever, they're all coming out. And hopefully, in a month or so, I'll end up with a brush that doesn't really shed and works absolutely amazingly well without losing too many hairs. The razor was the Carve Christopher Bradley razor. Aluminium handle, aluminium top cap, stainless steel base plate in the open call, the B plate, and this one, I think it's 0.73 blade gap. And a brand new Voscod blade in there. And as you can see, it's a total nick free and, and basically irritation free shave. I'm really, really happy with it. Really close. It obviously, I mean, that's one blemish that I can't do anything about. I'm going to have a little look at that off camera, see if I can scoop that hair out if I can get rid of it. 
it'll bleed a bit, I'll be left with a little scab, but then it'll go away and I'll be absolutely fine, I'll be happy then. And I'm going to finish off today. Have I got it in here? I do. Now, the secret artisan that makes the shaving soap that I used recently, the, the vegetal based shaving soap, vegan based, all very, very high quality ingredients and probably the best vegetal based soap that I've used, has formed a partnership with this company. Now, I don't know, to be honest, I don't really know a whole heap about them. So I'm going to focus. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's the camera's over there. What am I doing? There we go. I'm getting confused here. Codex Beauty. Now, I believe Codex are based out of America. This, this particular one is from the country where the lady's from that makes the soap. And I think it actually says on here, it does actually, it says it down here. So this is where this soap is based, or this, this company is based, or this branch of it in Ireland. And it's all about good, this one is called Skin Superfood. Now, where is the ingredients list? Has it got it on here? Oh, do you know what? It doesn't. Luckily, I've got all the boxes still, but the ingredients aren't in here, but it's a very clean ingredients list. And I've been using this now for about four days, and I have really noticed a difference just in the sort of healthy look of my skin. It, it, it's a little bit shiny in my skin. I mean, some people don't like that. I find shiny skin to be a healthy thing. Generally, that's the way I look at it. Now, one thing I do like about these, other than the fact that they're all plastic, <laughs> is that you think it's going to be a normal bottle for, for squirting the cream out when it's not. So basically, you take the top off and you're left with that. So you then invert it and you've got a pump bottle, which is quite nice. So I'm going to pump a little bit on my hand here. A little bit like that. I don't know if that'll be enough. You don't need a lot of this stuff. It's generally pretty, pretty good. You don't want to saturate your skin. It's got a lovely sort of wild orange and woodsy sort of scent. And it absorbs so quickly. Now, I was sent this from the woman that makes the soap. She's now a partnership with this company or part of this company. It's very expensive. I was... The package that she sent me in, it had four soaps and one, two, three, I think it was four, I thought it was five, there might be another thing, but five different things of this. There's a, a facial oil, there's an eye cream, and then there's a, just a general daily moisturiser. Just to try out, test it, see how it goes and give them some feedback, just a, as I did with the soap. That's, a, that's absorbed already. It's one of the best post shave feels that I've, I've actually had believe it or not, from using the skin food. I've used it twice now and it's really nice. It's not greasy, it's not oily. I don't get any real problems with it at all. It's got quite a nice, pleasant scent. doesn't linger for long, so you can pop an aftershave or something or afterwards, but it seems to really get into your skin and hydrate it, especially if you've got some irritation and things. I actually used it after I had that shocking shave with the vintage Gillette razor and, and it worked wonders. The other one that I have been using daily as well, along with the eye cream, is this one, which is facial oil and once again I mean it's it's expensive I think this stuff's like 70 or 90 American dollars for this just this one little bottle and what you do basically you kind of screw it in, pops that up I didn't know what was going on at first I thought this was a spray bottle <laughs> I didn't know what was happening never had these type of products before this has got rosehip bog myrtle and sea buckhorn and basically you pull it out and it gives you pretty much that there and two drops for your whole face pretty much and that's you done Pop it back in and you'll see that pop back down. And that's what does an automatic pick up of the oil. So once you've done that, if you squirt that back in, you see there's nothing in it. When you screw that down, it's it down. When you open it back up to use it the next day, it automatically sucks up the same amount of oil. So you can't like overfill it or anything like that and waste it. Gives you a pretty good amount as it is. I don't use that much, I use about two thirds of that. My wife almost uses all of it. But yeah, well, super, what a shave. Obviously lost a few hairs, but I'm not too worried about that. Great post shave stuff as well. I will be featuring this a little bit more over the channel, just as I'm using some things, just trying to get a feel for it and see how it actually works. And whether it does work, whether it actually makes you look more, you know, you know younger and more youthful and more vibrant, probably wouldn't do shit all to me, but I've noticed when I use it on my eyes, it does help a little bit. I haven't used it today, but I'm not sleeping very well. So it's a real test for it to try and do something with my eyes at the moment. But other than that, 
Stay safe, drive safe. Don't drink and drive and I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.